Sustainability is all about optimal size and lower CO2. So we start from what we know in IC engines. If you want to be sustainable, you want it to be optimal, then hybridization is the key. Currently, India is growing in that area. So that's one aspect. The second one is when we jump into EV in trying to make a zero emission vehicles, then it is going to be the motor technology is at a high today and the battery technology is at a maturity today on what we use as a chemistry or what we use as an energy density. The controller technology has to grow. So the motor is matured, the battery pack, we used it, we know what it is, but the controller technology has to mature so that the optimization of the powertrain is good to get you a sustainable powertrain or sustainable e-train. First of all, Amalgamations has put together an EV business uh -huh. to design, develop uh, zero emission components uh -huh. in a sustainable way. So the answer remains in uh, motor technology. Number one, you can look at currently everybody is going after permanent magnet motors, but we are also entering into switched reluctant motors where you can call it as non-magnet motors. So when these two are used in their own way, so we would contribute to certain amount of sustainability through not using the magnets. And second is we are trying to use the battery packs in optimal size so that we are sustainable. That means you wanted the battery to be long lasting for seven years and 50,000 kilometers or five years and 70,000 kilometers. So the optimal size of the battery pack remains so that we are not changing them sooner or we are not losing their efficiency. So our game is efficient, optimal powertrain which can be used in long term. So that becomes a contributing way to sustainable. So once the end of life is coming in, we are seriously looking at recycle, reuse and reduce or in the other way reduce reuse and recycle so this is our way to move forward okay in in a, in a magnetic motors you have uh, let's say that for a small motor which is of 6 kilowatt you have 28 to 32 magnet pieces just mm -hmm. sitting there the non magnet motors you don't have a magnet you have switched reluctant that means a controller becomes an important part there is no magnet either in stator or in rotor. The stator has a winding and the rotor has a, a steel, steel part which is sitting there. But now you need to get the EMF between these two. Okay. It's the job of a controller to switch, to switch and then get you the same EMF what was there with magnets. So there is no magnet, zero magnets. But what happens? The controller need to be in higher technology. So in this way, what happens? The the price what you are spending for the magnet will come down. The price what you add for the controller will a little bit go up. But this is sustainable because I am not digging the earth to get the magnets. Yeah, see the non-magnet motors can be serviced easily. As said and done, you are seeing a fan. People would recoil it or rewind it. They give it to you. The similar way you can do the non-magnet motors. But the magnet motors are not possible. You need to organize the motors or assemble the magnets in the right way with poles you know facing each other so it needs to be done by a technically qualified people so what we are expecting in agricultural area if you bring in motors with no magnets probably we are contributing to the sustainable future but also it could be serviceable in seven ten years in the event you need any service it should be better than the magnet motors but our aim is not to go into the service use the powertrain until its end of the life with the optimal design and reliability yes they are because magnets will tend to lose its property over a period of time when you use in a sustained temperature i don't know what is a high temperature sustained temperature you use it for a long time the magnetic flux density is going to reduce over a period of time when i say period of time seven to ten years you will lose five percent but then the efficiency is lost so this is how the magnet is going to degrade because you can't control the usage of the magnetic motors the customer is the king and he's going to use how he wants it to use but the switched reluctant motors, where you don't have magnets, the thermal event can happen and it doesn't bother anyone. The efficiencies of the SR motors are little lower than the IPM motors, but still they are going to help you in more sustainable way. So that could be a preferred way, but there's a lot of work to be done in SR motor when compared to IPM motors. Number one is local materials available. We are dependent on importing many things, example, magnets and lithium. That's the first uh, 
you know, uh, challenge. In case we overcome and the country is overcoming by figuring out lithium inside the country, we would make some magnets which are of uh, Indian available technology. We will do that. But the second challenge is going to be competency development. And everybody wants EVs yesterday. So there is no time to develop a competency and then make products, then sell. So the competency development has to be the key. So we are taking a route of strategic partnerships with people who already have the competency. Also develop internally because it's very, very important to have strong competency in-house to have an application engineering so that the end customer is happy with the solutions what we provide. Yeah, num number one, lightweighting when you say the battery pack should be lightweight mm -hmm. and optimal size. So when I say lightweighting, the battery packs can come back with a composite, you know, composite uh, battery packs, which has a lightweight so that kg per kilowatt hour today, it is around 6 kg per kilowatt hour. So if you go into 3.5 to 4 kg per kilowatt hour, for example, we use pouch cells instead of the cylindrical cells. We use composites instead of aluminum or steel. So you, you reduce everywhere 10, 20%. You would like to go from a 6 kg per kilowatt hour to a 4 kg per kilowatt hour. Probably you or we, all of them are going into a much better state. In view of motors, for example, you could say the motor housings are today with aluminum primarily. Can be with once again with plastics or composites. When we understand more usage pattern, we can do that. And the rotors can be hollow rotors. Today they are all shaft uh, steel materials. We could go with alternate material can have hollow rotors. So everywhere you want to reduce 10, 20% the starting game. Because if you see in the IC engines, we started thinking about lightweighting after 20, 25 years of usage. But here we'll do the same from the day one. So lightweighting is contributed by alternate materials, number one, number two, optimal size, and number three, the better efficiency of those power trains what we have.